want to know why the Glazers haven't sold Manchester United yet? This is why. Back in 2021, the European Super League was announced. It was launched and it was shut down within the space of three to four days after widespread huge protests from all football fans in the UK. But the European Super League is back. Announcement today with a new CEO. They're not going away. The greedy, greedy fuckers are trying to tear football apart. And if the Glazers are allowed, they will kill Manchester United. This video, please watch it. Please share it. It's important. This really is significant. And this has to be an important message that everybody understands. You can't ignore what's coming. And the Glazers will try again and again to get involved in the European Super League. This announcement today from A22 Sports, they've announced the hiring of a new CEO, Bernd Reichardt, who works, I think, for German television. And this is a sort of promotional video that's been released. I don't know if it's that down for copyright, but fuck it, I'm going to play it anyway. I'm going to assess it, and I'm going to speak about all the key points of it, because you all need to really understand this. I swear to God. You European club football is facing existential problems. Yeah, you. As a passionate fan and newly appointed oh, so. CEO of sports promoter A22, I'm convinced that football can do better. Can and do I better. thank you for letting me share you. some thoughts with you. First, European football is losing its undisputed leadership position in global Got that. Don't need to do They're trying to argue fo European football is losing its undisputed leadership position, trying to say that more games every week among the biggest teams is what the young audience needs and wants. Number two, they are saying that the current financial model of football is broken. No, just certain clubs are so goddamn skint and in bankrupt because they fuck their own finances that they're trying to worm their way out of it in another fashion. I'll get onto that in a little bit. Number three, clubs should be sovereign and the master of their own identity, arguing the fact that European football is controlled by UEFA. It's always been controlled by UEFA back in the 50s, the whole way through, and it's survived to this point. Why does that need to fucking change? It all revolves around money, finances, and this is where the danger lies. That's why I need to do this video. I could have done it tomorrow. We play Spurs tonight. I could have waited. I didn't want to wait for this. Now, look, he's saying, I said, a former chief executive of RTL Deutschland, 2024, 2025 is a reasonable expectation for a new launch. And you can bet your bottom dollar. That this is the reason why the Glazers are currently refusing to sell. Now, bear in mind, after the European Super League involvement of United, the backtrack and the ultimate reversal from United, and this statement from the Glazers, our position has not changed. We will not be participating in the European Super League. This has been communicated repeatedly and unequivocally. They've lied through their teeth since they've taken over at Manchester. And they will continue to lie. All I've got to do is go on the superleague.com and look at the initial press release that was given when the Super League was announced. And I scroll to the bottom of it. And what do I see? Oh, yes. I see Joel Glazer still down there as co chairman. Sorry, co chairman of Manchester United, vice chairman of the European Super League. By bringing together the world's greatest clubs and players to play each other. Throughout the season, the European Super League will open a new chapter for European football, ensuring world-class competition and facilities and increased financial support for the wider football pyramid. My ass, it was about lining the pockets of the clubs that needed the most. And that's where and why this is so dangerous. The first uh, reiteration of the European Super League, spectacular how it collapsed. It was such a victory for fans. But trust me when I say you need to mobilise behind the protests that are going right now because it is a case of you can see that train coming. And it is a case of when and not if it hits when it comes to the European Super League and Manchester United and the Glazers' involvement. Because Real Madrid are absolutely pushing this. Look, 2nd of October, this was only two weeks ago, this was. Uh, Florentino, Florentino Perez reaffirmed the commitment to the European Super League after the El Clasico between Barcelona and Real Madrid. And Laporta, who, of course, Barcelona's finances are in the absolute mud. They were filling with their books all summer, did some unprecedented stuff to twist the numbers. And they are still heavily, heavily in debt after taking out short-term loans to spend big on players that blew up in their face. Real Madrid and Barcelona are desperate for the European Super. 
Van der Poel to hear saying after that meeting between Florentino Perez and Joan Laporta and the El Clasico, right now the Super League is the only solution that we see to defend the interests of the clubs, ours and those of all clubs. They are taking the rights off us and that cannot be. Whereas ultimately, the Spanish clubs are just fucking reeling that they are not top of the tree anymore. Hey, Real Madrid and Barcelona dominated. And they still do Real Madrid. European Super League is from the Times. European Super League set to be revived to halt the English dominance. The Premier League and the money inside the Premier League just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I think in the summer, the spend of the Premier League was more than Serie A, La Liga, Bundesliga and Liga combined. So when you've got Real Madrid pushing for it like this and you've got Barcelona pushing for it like that, because they don't, they, they, they're like, oh, it's unfair. Where's my billions? Barcelona, look, Sam Wallace there has given it a set of financial apocalypse. But make no mistake, the Glazers will be involved in this. Joel Glazer was the vice chairman when it launched. Doesn't matter what the Glazers say, the Glazers will be involved. And this is why they have not sold Manchester United. This is why I think they will not sell Manchester United and refuse to sell. And this is where rivalries get pushed aside, completely pushed aside. Chelsea, man, I hate what Chelsea did to the fucking Premier League when uh, Ramovic came in with his oil money. But they protested against the European Super League. Lee, look, Liverpool, they protested against the European Super League. Leeds. Everybody showed in unison the fact that football fans despised it. And it was one of the proudest days I think any United fan has had for what happened with that Liverpool game. There are fans who have made their way into the ground and they are now protesting. They've come through the bottom end, the Stratford end is away to my left. They're now heading out onto the pitch to let their feelings be known. This is obviously not what we want to see and the security here at Old Trafford has failed. Sixteen years we've been protesting against the Glazers, 2005, 2010, and now again in 2021. And this time we're not going away. In the last few minutes, it has been confirmed that Manchester United's Premier League game with Liverpool has been postponed. That's after fans broke into Old Trafford to protest against the club's owners. The United fans have looked at the Glazers and all thought, enough's enough. It's enough from them. We've seen it today. And I, I, I believe the United fans... They're doing this because they love the club, ultimately. Okay, people might agree with it. But something you have to put a marker on for people to take notice. And this is all over the world now. And people have to sit up and take note. Hopefully the owners of Man United and say, listen, these fans are deadly serious. And there's more to come. It, it, this is just the start of it from United fans. I guarantee you. This is just the start of it from the United fans. It was just the start of it from the United fans. And the 1958 have sort of taken the mantle on and sort of led with everything since. But this is the biggest threat to English football, repeated, the same as it was in 2021. It will come back. It won't go away. For me, this is the fundamental reason why the Glazers have not sold. The fundamental reason why you need to mobilise yourself, do whatever you can to help push the Glazers out protest. Keep exerting pressure and squeezing as much as we possibly can. Because if this is allowed to happen, it will kill Manchester United. And they are trying everything they possibly can to revive this. The European Super League is back. The European Super League has got a new CEO. Uh, the European Super League is not going away. It's got support of Real Madrid. It's got support of Barcelona. will have support probably of, Juvent of Juventus as well. And it will have support from other clubs too. The Glazers, even if they say, look, we're not going to be involved in the European Super League. As you can see here, Joel Glazer is still on the website as vice chairman. Don't fucking believe a word of what he says. They will be involved. They will try and squeeze money out of it. And if it happens and the European Super League goes ahead, the end of Manchester United, they will kill Manchester United. How we get rid of them whilst they're still holding on to this, I don't know. Don't underestimate. That's why I've done a video today before the game against them.